Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video, we will discuss lead code question 2552 that says count increasing quadruplets. Okay, so we are here given a zero index integer and nums of size n and uh, it contains all numbers ranging from 1 to n, only from num uh, numbers in the range 1 to n and we need to find quadruplets i, j, k, and l such that i is less than j, is less than k, is less than l and nums of i is less than nums of k and that is less than nums of j and that is less than nums of l okay let's take a look at this example for better understanding so here we have this and uh, nums array or uh, containing numbers from 1 to 5 it is of size 5 so it only contains element from 1 to 5 the next thing is we need to find combination uh, of i j j k and l that satisfy this condition and we need to return number of such combination possible okay so one such combination possible is you take i uh, as uh, index 0, j is 1, k is 2, and l is 3. So as you can see here that 1 is less than uh, nums of k that is 2, 2 is less than 3, and 3 is less than 4. Similarly, 1 is less than 2, 2 is less than 3, and 3 is less than 5. So these are two possible combinations of these quadruplets. Uh, now if you take a look at this example, here we return 0. Why? Because as you can see here, if you consider let's say index 1 as j, then there is no index uh, k which is greater than uh, j but whose value is less than j. So there is no such index k here. So that doesn't exist for any quadruplets that satisfy this as well as this condition. So we return 0 here. Um, and by, if you try to approach this question uh, with a naive solution by running a 4 for loops, uh, then it will be a short short TL because that would be big O of n is to power 4 and to the power 4 uh, time complexity and the, the nums length is 4000 so uh, it would be greater than 10 is to 12 so it will give you TL if you try to do with 4 for loops so we need to optimize this right now see I here I have taken one example and let us try to understand this question with this see here I have also written uh, this uh, condition that we need to satisfy so yeah what is so let's so here one major thing is we need to find this that is any index k that is greater than index j but the value of nums of k is less than nums of j right we need to find uh, this thing uh, th so we just give a priority to this to, to this okay so what what are the combination possible that satisfy this condition so here one such possible is 3 comma 2 because if you in uh, 3 let me give the index so here as you can see 2 is greater than 1 in terms of index and uh, its value this 2 is less than 3 in terms of value so here both this condition is satisfied so once you found uh, a possible j comma k solution then we need to find number of potent number of possible i number of possible i and uh, here number of possible j possible sorry not j l solution number of here possible i solution and number of possible j solution or number of potential characters that can be i and that can be l right once you found j and k okay so here uh, for this let's say if this is j this is k what can be uh, the i i can be this can any other elements be i no the ith element uh, should be should have index less than say j so this is only one answer possible answer right and if you look for l so can this be l yes this can be l can this can be l yes and this can be l yes this can be also l because all this value all this uh, indexes are greater than k right and all these values are greater than j okay so this the uh, so for this for this j and k combination of 3 comma 2 the number of potential i is 1 and the number of potential uh, element for l is 4 so this will contribute 4 into 1 that is 4 to our answer okay now try to find another this j and k uh, possible combination so uh, if you look here can we say 6 comma 5 also yeah if you take a look at uh, value 6 comma 5 the index is of 6 is 3 index of 5 is 4 right Thus, 4 is greater than 3 in terms of index, but its value is less than uh, j, right? So, yeah, let me try to show here. 
okay now uh, here our j is uh, uh, this uh, this is element k this is element j right for this j and k combination now we would find the number of potential i so the such such that i is less than j in terms of index and value of i is also less than the value of k so value uh, so uh, these three are potential num i can be there and this is uh, is for a potential k see uh, k sorry l uh, so after i we need to find all the potential l so can uh, this index be potential l yes in terms of this it is true but is n of l is greater than n of j no 4 is not greater than 6 But is seven is greater than six? Yes. So this is this can be potential L. So for this uh, J and K combination, the potential num I are number of potential I is three. Number of potential L is one. So this will contribute three into one. That is three to one answer. And overall, our answer would be four plus three. This is called seven combination of I J K and L. That satisfies this condition, right? So seven possible quadruplets are formed. so i hope you guys understood the approach to this question see this question is uh, there is no uh, def defined an intuition behind this we are just doing what it is asked but we are just trying to dig up the question and what is it what it is trying to tell so based on this condition if you found any uh, j and k possible combination then we only need to find number of potential i and number of potential l and by multiplying this we can get the number of uh, quadruplets that we can form let's say Uh, so let's say one can be formed from by taking this element, otherwise from this element or taking this element as i. So this so multiplying them, we'll get number of parts uh, possible quadruplets by taking this as j and this as k. Got it? And in the end, we just sum up. So I hope you guys understood the question as well as approach till now. So now let's move on to the coding part. So here let me start by taking n as the size of this nums array, nums dot size. Then let me uh, create one vector. to store elements less than i at current index so let me take one 2d vector 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 int less than less than uh, n plus 1 it would be the size uh, and initialize it with 0 and plus 1 comma 0 okay yeah and yeah so here uh, what i am doing is let's say less then of i j what it will represent it will represent the number of elements less than i in the first in the in first j elements okay the number of uh, elements that are less than i in the first j elements right now uh, i will use the for loops to compute this value For loop will start from i equals to one, i is less than equals to n, comma i plus plus. Why start from one? Because as you can see, if we contain uh, the con the nums contain all the numbers from one to n, so this is the loop for one to n. And now we will loop for this nums array. Uh, in j equal to one, comma j is less than. Uh, sorry, from j equal to zero, comma j is less than n, comma j plus plus, and Less than of i n j equals to less than of i and j minus one plus uh, this condition the nums of j minus one is less than one. Okay, so let me try to explain this. Uh, sorry, one thing we will also start this loop from j equal to one. See for the first element. Uh, the number of elements uh, that are smaller than this would be zero, so we will keep that as zero, and we will start from n or loop from n, and we will go up till n. Okay. Uh, as for as for this last element, there are there are no, we also need to find the number of elements less than that. So yeah. Okay. Now at every time we get element that is less than the current element, uh, the uh, the current i, then we add this. So this is like a if condition. So if this is true, then we will add one. Else we will keep. As the previous answer, so I hope you guys know the prefix sum. This is same similar to that. We are using this as a prefix sum and adding one each time if this condition is satisfied. If we get a number that is less than i, got it. Now moving ahead, let us initialize one result uh, as zero. Let us now loop, uh, run a loop to find j and k uh, possible combination. 
so from j equal to 0 j is less than and j plus plus and for int k equals to j plus 1 why j plus 1 because k must be greater than j in terms of index and now k is less than n k plus plus now if we find any number nums of k that is uh, less than nums of j so, so if we found something like this nums of k is less than nums of j and the indexes are by default this way as you can see here then we would do something so for that what we would do we would get the number of potential i so that is uh, uh, let me name it as potential i and uh, one another thing that we need to find here is potential l got it number of four potential values of i the number of potential values of this l and what we would do we would simply make result plus equal to uh, multiplication of this both right potential i into potential l okay now the thing is we need to find number of potential i and for that what we would do uh, we would simply call this less than less than of of what nums of k and j right so nums of k would be the value of the nums of k so all the values that are smaller than that as you can see this i so all the values that are smaller than nums of k and in the first j element would be stored in potential i and we need to find now greater element than nums of j and for that what we would do we would simply do n minus nums of j I will explain you afterwards minus k minus less than nums of j and in the second index I would pass k plus 1 okay okay the thing here to note is n minus nums of j what does that mean so if you think uh, so if our j is this and n is 5 so total number of potential element for l would be 4 and 5 but if there is a condition where let's say uh, the index of 4 is less than k so as you as we saw here that for this let's say this is the j and this is the k now uh, let's say if there would be any element 8 here right if there would be 8 here so can we take 8 no See, though 8 is greater than nums of j, right? 8 is greater than nums of j. Uh, and total number of elements are 8. Nums of j is 6. So, uh, 7 and 8 are, pot uh, are the potential element or potential value of n. But the thing to hear, note here is, we only want, want the elements that are greater than j and whose index are also greater than k. So, what we did? So, these are the potential values of n. And from that, we remove all the elements that are greater than nums of j, but are present at uh, index whose value is less than k. So that is k minus less than nums of j. So all the values that are, uh, that are less than nums of j and present at uh, this index in the first k plus element, k plus one element, we remove that. Okay. So see the thing here is, uh, if you might be get confused here is, so let me try to explain you with the comment. Uh, so let's say uh, this, uh, what does this state? Uh, this states number of element less than nums of j present at index k plus 1 okay now what we need to find elements greater than nums of j uh, and uh, index uh, less than equal to k right we need to find this and uh, uh, so what we did uh, see the k is total number of elements we minus this means all the elements whose values are less than nums of j and present at the index less than equal to k. So what are the remaining elements? The remaining elements are elements uh, that are greater than nums of j and index is less than k. So this is the remaining elements, right? And we subtracted this from this total number of possible L. So for we, this is what? These are all the possible values of L but whose index is less than k and we subtracted it from the all possible values of L. So okay, I hope you guys understood this logic here. So this is so this is how we get potential value of all L, and then we multiply it, and in the end, what we would do, we would return result, right? Now let me try to run this. 
Okay, the test cases are passed. Now let me try to submit this. So yeah, our code got accepted. Now talking about the time and space complexity. The time complexity is the big of n square, uh, and the space complexity is also big of n squared, as you can see here. So yeah, that's all for this question. I hope you guys understood the approach as well as the solution. Also, the thing here to note here is if you have focus on this condition, then uh, it would be easy for you to reach up to the solution. So yeah, that's all for this video. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.